Good morning, I'm Amy Slaughter Myers, one of the co-rectors here at St. Francis Episcopal Parish and Community Center and a blessed Advent season to you all. We are in the first week of Advent, Advent, which means coming or arrival, where we await the second coming of the Son of Man under which um, all things will be subject to Christ. And we also await patiently for the yearly remembrance of Christ's birth in a manger on, on Christmas. I hope that this Advent brings you joy and brings you peace and hope and love. And I look forward to moving through this season with you. Um, I'm continuing today to say a little bit more about this book that we are reading together. All are invited to our first hybrid gathering to discuss this book. It's Walk in Love, Episcopal Beliefs and Practices. And that hybrid gathering will ha have information on the written, um, um, the written note along with this video. It is next week and all are invited. I wanna hear from you all, whether you are new to the Episcopal Church or whether you are a long time Episcopalian, how you are hearing and how you are seeing and what new things are you learning about this peculiar tradition that we follow very few of us these days, under a million people, I believe, um, in the Episcopal Church these days in 2022. And what are you learning about our practices in the Episcopal Church? What are you wondering about? What questions do you have? And what draws you? And ask God to illuminate that for you, illuminate for what God wants to do in you with that. Um, this particular chapter that uh, I am on today, Grow in Grace Through the Years, is on confirmation and marriage. We have been talking about the sacraments, uh, baptism and Eucharist, the great dominical sacraments, that is the sacraments that the majority of all Christians of any uh, denomination uh, recognize as being handed to us as followers of Jesus from Jesus, um, Jesus self. And now we're moving into the other sacraments that the Episcopal Church sees as sacramental, but are not for all people in the same way. In other words, um, some of us will be drawn to these additional sacraments, confirmation, marriage, ordination, etc., and some of us won't. And um, that simply is a matter of the gifts that God is doing in you and in your life. Um, I get a lot of questions about confirmation. Uh, when I was growing up in the Episcopal Church, um, it used to be the teaching back in the 70s that uh, people could not take communion um, until they were confirmed. So confirmation was at a very early age. I was 11 when I was confirmed. And confirmation, as you can um, read about both in this book or in the Book of Common Prayer is considered a mature and adult profession of faith and a public commitment to follow the uh, worship of uh, Jesus in the Episcopal tradition. Again, it's not required, but it's something that um, many people are drawn to. Um, again, in, when, in the time when I was being raised, um, I don't know that I had a lot of choice that was more of an expectation, but now in 2022, there are choices. There are a lot more choices because uh, the teaching currently um, in the Episcopal churches is that all baptized Christians are welcome at the table. And so you do not need to have been confirmed um, to receive the sacrament um, of the Eucharist. Um, the other uh, sacrament that is in, in this particular chapter is the sacrament of marriage, sacrament of marriage. And um, one of the points that um, Scott Gunn and Melody Wilson-Shobe make is that 
though they discuss the uh, marriage right in the Book of Common Prayer, they acknowledge that that is not the only authorized right for marriage. And as uh, the world has changed, as God's revelation to the church has changed about how the church practices the sacraments and opens the sacraments to all the baptized. Um, there are rights for same-sex marriage and the blessing of um, same-sex marriages that are not in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer but are authorized um, given the changes in marriage and our, our civil life, um, there are changes in marriage and our church life also and how the church understands marriage. And to that point, um, while the Book of Common Prayer will say that the church understands marriage as a lifelong commitment and that the sacrament of marriage is that um, the day-to-day -day living out of that marriage, there is a compassionate pastoral response um, that the Episcopal Church in the last 50 plus years has recognized that uh, because of human frailty and because of human brokenness, um, not all marriages will be lifelong and that divorce is a reality and that the ending of a marriage and the death of a marriage is a reality and God is at work in divorce also. And while we may not necessarily have a right, meaning R-I-T-E, for divorce that we have for marriage, there is no question that um, divorced humans are just as invited and welcome in the Episcopal Church as um, non-divorced humans. And that may seem obvious to you, but certainly again in my lifetime, that has changed. And so now in 2022, again, bishops are divorced and priests are divorced. And for some of you who've been Episcopalians for decades, remember a time when that was not the case. So both marriage and divorce, and even the sacrament of confirmation and its relationship to baptism, all of those as the world changes, as our understanding of, of how God works in the church is shaped, and we as humans in our blindness um, are given more of a glimpse into God's radical welcome and God's radical love uh, for all people in all circumstances and for all creation um, at all times. Uh, the church um, responds to that. The church responds to that to be, uh, to be as open and welcoming as it can be in the following, in the following of the footsteps of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. So uh, next week, there'll be a hybrid gathering on this. Please bring your questions, bring your prayers, uh, bring, your, bring your criticisms, bring your um, hopes. If you are drawn to baptism, if you're drawn to confirmation, um, or even if you're just drawn to talk about um, our beloved Episcopal Church with a community of like-minded folks, uh, again, virtually or in person, you are welcome. God's peace be with you. Amen.